Aloha, and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp, and I'm here today to talk to you and about this idea of earth timing and how we can consciously connect with the timing of our planet and nature. And bringing to you today to have this conversation is a consciousness coach and longtime earth tender and lover, Kari Vantine. Welcome, Kari. Aloha. Thank you for having me with you today. I'm so excited to be on this space and sharing with all of you. It's one of my favorite topics. <laughs> I love that because I really have had a bit of an aversion, actually, to the slowing down of the seasons. And right now where we are located in Hawaii, um, we are in our winter and the days are shorter and the nights are longer and we don't have as much sunshine. And being such an action packed kind of person, I have always sort of gone into even just, I would almost call them mini depressions during this time of year. And it wasn't until I began really embracing the rhythm of this earth, which, I mean, I can't be embarrassed because everybody gets there when they get there. It, it wasn't until last year that I really found this surrender to the rhythm of the earth. And I'm so grateful that I did. So I would love to hear what you have to say about that rhythm and the time of where we are right now in this, people call it the dark time and that could sound negative, but it's really not. There's like, that's where all things birth from, right? Yes. And, and winter, it's such an interesting time because for many of us who are caught up in also the holiday energy, there's a very strong contrasting energy that's happening. So I'm going to sort of separate them in this conversation a little and go to the thing that you're talking about, which is this hibernation time, which we are in Hawaii, so it's mostly gorgeous here, even though it's our winter, but there are other parts of this planet that are in dark, cold, and snow, and it is really the hibernation time, right? And as humans, we're, our natural systems, we're animals, and we are wired to know in these year-long arcs, even though most of us have forgotten it, consciously forgotten it, our cellular structures don't forget it. And so we're here in the human time, but our bodies are remembering earth time. And so as it comes to winter like this, winter, whether we're still, you know, we're here in Hawaii or in a colder climate, our bodies are actually coming to the place of slowing down a little, becoming a little bit more, um, like we want to bring the nurturing in. It would be a time when the food that we'd eaten for the year, you know, we need to make sure that it lasts. We need to have our awareness to tending the fire or to caring for um, our smaller units of family. So there's a, a rhythm that is really natural this time of year that would have a slowing down. And then, you know, we have it in this beautiful contrast to what's actually happening in our culture, which is, I'm guessing in your experience too, Letitia, it's like it's it's like we get speeded up this time of year. And there's an expectation and an outward focus and this idea that we're supposed to be going into this extra caring for others time when actually the, our systems are designed to come back to self time. Right. And how do we like, how do we honor that? Like, how do we honor what we are as innate beings and also stay in the, I mean, okay. So we're in the holiday season, which ultimately is about love and caring and light and really what do we do with that we get so caught up we don't have any sense of presence and when we slow down we have that sense of presence and that's when people really feel cared for that's when we really feel that connection between our loved ones and the things that we do with them the activities that we share so yeah, how do we, what are ways that we can that you found in your experience of being able to tap into that and do both? That's wonderful. I love that you brought up the word love 
because I think that's one of our, that's one of the doorways we can go through, right? This is a it's here already in in the concept or the idea of this time of year is that we're supposed to be in a time of love. Um, whether or not that's actually what we're experiencing, it's it's billboarded everywhere. So it's it's a good start. That's sort of a calling card to come to find when we can come to that actual vibration. And I'd love if everyone's listening could put a hand on their heart, maybe down on their solar plexus, which is that space right below our ribs. I think of these as our two two of our brains, our many brains in this body. Yeah. Oh. And just even touching those parts of our body, how the body lands just a little bit more, right? And the animal, so the heart right here, where this is very naturally where we might see ourselves as having love, but it's also where we have a sense of connection, have a sense of our um, a centering. And then we come down to the solar plexus, and this is a little bit more of our animal. This is our will center. For some people, this might be a little bit tender. We don't tend the, this center very well. So giving both these areas a little bit of a massage right now. So first of all, when we, when we can land actually in our physical bodies, we're in a very, very different point of orienting. Most of our culture is designed, we're actually working from a higher, the, the front, not even the frontal lobe, actually the the, the, the cortex is way in the back where mostly fear is driven is this time of year and a lot of times where people are are operating from. So when we can come up into our creativity and then we can drop into our heart, into our will center and bring more of our actual body, this would be one of the first doorways I would go through. And in this place, we can actually be feeling the, more of the layers of love, right? And connection that are really core in, in, I would say any time of the year, but let's just say in this time of the year when we're actually expecting that from each other. Mm. And I love that. I mean, even with just, that's what I love to bring to our viewers are simple ways that we can, that it doesn't take a lot. Put your hand on your heart, people. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> so easy. I'm going through traffic, I'm in a line. I'm in a really, really, really long line and I'm starting to get out of that space of gratitude, out of that space of my loving self. And I put my hand on my heart and uh, my awareness is shifted naturally. So I love that. That's an amazing, simple tool, people, that we can use to bring ourselves back to that timing. And I even had like this sigh that came out of me that even just holding my hand on my heart for just a hot minute, you know, that wasn't very long, that really changed my energy in my body. So mm. I love Thank that. Yeah, I love that too. And, and I actually, have, I noticed as I'm watching myself here, I have a habit of putting my hand on my heart most of the time, a good deal of the time. And I would say this gets, this is a that's something you might try out when you're actually in interaction with people and you're noticing that you're a little bit off. See if you can come back really literally right here. It's just a little like, it's a little reset. Oh, right here. Yeah. And it brings, yeah, it just brings that awareness so forward and so um, beautifully and subtle. It's subtle and it's also easy to do. So, and it's friendly. It's not like you're, intruding on anyone else's space you're just bringing that awareness for yourself um so i'd also like to bring that into with this overwhelm what are how does that even happen how did we get from being these beings that we would i mean we come from a time right where we had to fight for our food for our protection we didn't have, like, we had survival mode for reals. Mm -hmm. And now most of those things, I mean, God bless us here in our situation that I don't really have to worry about my survival. Um, and I feel so grateful for that. And I still find myself sometimes going into survival mode, especially before I started slowing down uh, a couple of years ago. So where does that come from? Like, how did we get from there to here? Mm. Mm. 
Oh, I have so much to say about that. That's that's like a territory that I just love. So thank thank you. It's like a playground, and I would I would say um, there are so there's a number of major pieces at play. One of them, which is a, I will geek out for a quick moment, is um, how we relate to time. So if you look back to mm, before the Industrial Revolution, before actually people, when people were still nomadic, before they started creating gardens and producing and having a reason to stay in one place. Before then, when more people were more nomadic, people were what was considered animus. And that term is known in many, many different ways. And I'll just simplify it here. Animism was a belief that everything was connected. And so every object, whether it's a rock, whether it's a you know, whether it's a piece of paper or a pen, everything is connected and everything has energy and life force. So back in that time when one related to the world from there, it was really, really different. Just feel it in this moment, like how far we are from there. We might have moments of that when we meditate or when we go for a long walk in the woods, which is why I, I love those practices or when we land in self. So at a time when, when there was actually the belief, the way that our minds operated was a belief that everything was connected. And in that time, there was a, because everything was connected, there was a sense of um, time was a really different, operated a really differently than it does now. We have bought into what's considered New Newtonian time. And Newtonian time was actually created by Newton, right? <laughs> like created as a named and ossified and made something that we follow, which is that something happens and something else happens and it's linear. And what happened before is in the past and what's happening in the future is in the future. It is absolutely amazing. This concept of time was a created concept right? Just to get that. Like that was created. We go to some of our, um, Einstein, one of, you know, my heroes, many of our heroes and in, in my geekdom of time love, um, his time concepts are part of what comes into quantum physics. Multiple things can happen at once, right? Multiple things happening at once. And some of us who are in, in uh, the consciousness world or in a personal growth world are playing with these ideas of like, wow, is it possible that I can heal the past by bringing it into current time? Is it possible that the future can be designed by operating from right now? So the reason I'm playing with all these here is that it is our agreement that time, and I say it's an agreement because it's something we can choose and we've all as our culture have cho chosen without knowing it, that time is linear and one thing follows another. When we operate like that, overwhelm, overwhelm can happen because we are trying to organize everything into a finite little line of what we can get done in a minute, an hour, a day. So this is now I'm playing on it on a bigger scale, but you can see how this built into our society has made us be a people where everything has to happen in an order time. And there's, there's a limited amount. And we all know that what we're trying to do here is so much more than we have linear time allotted for, right? So it's, it's a beautiful and yet painful realization. So when we're there, when we recognize that, we can also look for places where we can expand and shift time. And I would say this is where we come to this earth, earth time, earth consciousness time, is that the earth itself has not agreed to Newtonian time. <laughs> the earth is doing earth time. And if we want to be able to shift our relationship with what we humans have created, spend some time really connecting with the earth time, and you will you'll be able to make some of that unravel. Mm. You know, I'm just I'm I I handed over a big amount here. I hope it's oh my gosh. for people. I'm heart. I'm sitting here writing notes. I'm like, okay, wait, okay. First, <laughs> first of all, I want to address the um, connection because I think there's a lot of easy, simple ways that people can find connection. Um, doing little tiny things like, I mean, 
I, I oftentimes have exchange students in my home and they'll be like, oh, does this live here? Because that's how I speak. Oh, this lives here. And oh, I'll like see the tablecloth has like turned over. I'm like, oh, silly, don't do that. And I'll turn it back the way I want it to be or whatever. I'm like, okay, that's pretty good job. And they're just like, why do you talk to everything? Like it's alive. And I know I sound silly and crazy, but that's how I walk through this world is that it is all alive. And if you can adopt that, maybe even just like giggle at yourself a little bit, right? Play with it. Make it um, one of my teachers in Hawaiian cultural and, and chanting. She's like, it's a it's a play, um, a play assignment. <laughs> she always gives us play assignments. And I just love that. Um, Kalei no hea, Claghorn. And so I maybe make that a play assignment. I mean, do you do that, Kari? You you talk to everything, right? Like it's, it's part of you. Absolutely. And I'm not and, alone, right? <laughs> not alone. And I and I know that there are a lot of others out there. And there's the um, you know, when we're saying about something being alive, we're a little limited in our modern day concept of what that means, right? I'm not expecting my cup to talk back to me. It's not necessarily alive in that way, but it is full of cells and it's active and it's engaged in this world in the same way that I am on a certain level. Right. And so it actually is active, right? Yeah. We do know that because it's just a slower um, movement of cells, right? Particles. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Space between those particles, even it's, it's kind of very, it's mind boggling. And <laughs> as we have a relationship with these things, like I have a, a little orchid flower in front of me right here, just noticing and feeling the particular kind of quality of it. We, we all kind of want to lean in and go like, Oh yeah. What if we allowed ourselves to have that connection when we see something? We do that with babies, right? We do it sometimes with flowers, cute dogs. There's a lean in. There's a like, oh. when we feel that about anything, I, I love your plants in the background. I have plants around me all the time for the reason that I really do feel their aliveness. I'll pause in my day quite often and I'll have a little, just a little moment with the plant, right? A little, little hello yeah. plant, talk to the plant or just be with the plant, allow myself to slow down just a little bit such that I'm actually having a little bit of an exchange with this plant or with this flower. Okay. I'm going to bet there's a, quite a number of people out there who are listening to this right now going like, oh yeah, I do that too. I know that. And if you don't do that, um, expand, I invite you, we invite you to try it out because um, yeah, that it really makes a difference. It really does. So um, the next thing that of this huge like pile of worms that you opened up <laughs> is this time space, right? That we live. That I know a lot of times people say, "Oh, that's outside of time and space." And usually, what that means in my world is that you're not human in human form. It means you're in spirit form when you're outside of space and time. Um, however, we, and I have been taught from my master teacher that I am made of time and that's because I'm in this earthbound body, right? Otherwise I would have no way of knowing myself. However, my essence, my spirit, that is outside of space and time. So we can connect to that space and time being a part of it and being made of it and also recognizing that we are outside of it. And I think that's the quantum time that you, that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Beautifully put. Latisha. I There's did want, I wanted to highlight that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So next is how much of that linear time that creates the overwhelm is connected with expectation. Yeah. Yeah, you wanna to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I do. <laughs> My like, heart has a little ache to it because I'm so aware that we we are in a world in a, in a, um, in a cult and cultures, um, many of us are under a similar cultural understanding 
that, that there's an expectation from the time we're little that we become something better, bigger, more than we are. And, and I work in, in co the coaching world. So I'm, you know, people come to me with questions of like, how do I become better? How do I become more? Um, these expectations on themselves, that there's something more. Now there's a difference. I'm going to make a little note here. There's a difference between feeling a calling, like following your essence, being soul guided, like this whole out to like desi desire from a place of like, oh yeah, life. And the in contrast, the feeling of expectations or being driven or pulled or told when it's supposed to be something different than what we are. And I would say as soon as we put expectations in, in contrast to it, is that we are not something we're supposed to be. Mm. And anytime we're getting that message, this beautiful essence of a being gets a little shut down. And we talk about like, you know, during the holiday seasons or during seasons when there's a lot of pressure, people will go into mild depressions. This is a big piece of what's happening. There's a discrepancy, right? You can see, you can actually feel it as I say the words. The body has a little bit of like, oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even, and I'll use myself as an example. I had a holiday gathering this last weekend and my house is not decorated. I managed to pull it off and have some decorations, but that's mostly because my friend came over and helped me with the lights on the tree. There were no decorations on the tree, just lights. <laughs> and the front where you walked in my door, my front room's a mess. So I just left the lights off and I just had people come in and you know what? We all shared our connectivity. We all shared that connectiveness, our love, our laughter, our joy, our happiness for being able to gather because a few years ago we weren't doing this. You know, everyone had a different idea about being able to gather together and hug and share food in the same room and all of these things. So, um, yeah, letting go of that expectation and having to be held to some kind of a standard of what is that? You know, that's not necessary. Yes. And, and when we, when we allow expectations to sort of soften, then what gets left is actually who we are. We get yes. back here again from the beginning, like in touch with the essence of this being that we are. And so Letitia, that you were able to have a party at your house and you turn off the light and you invite people in and you're like, this is who I am, has an authenticity <laughs> to it that we are all starved for. We're in a, a world that doesn't have, you know, authenticity is, is and, and the rawness and, um, you know, the essence of who we are is not what we're taught to bring forward. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just going to say right here, like you will open up your life into so much more love and connection and ease and grace when you come back to self from this place of authenticity and let fall off expectation. And you know what? As I was listening to you, I realized that that whole front room, the reason why it's such a mess is because it's my creation room. That's where I make jewelry. That's where I make. Um, crafts and presents and all of these magical things and that's why it's a mess is because my my creativity is not linear people it is messy and magical and every which way including loose <laughs> yeah. so i'd love if we could just talk a little bit about that about how that creativity um part can actually lead to more like efficiency and more productivity and really finding that way to slow down to go fast, finding that way to, um, yeah, be in that space. Hmm. Yeah, beautiful. I love that. And you're bringing up creativity, which I meant to mention when I was talking about the different forms of time. Creativity is its own time. Have you ever been in the zone being creative or even, you know, those people who surf, it's a similar energy being out on the water or being in the woods. We go into a zone. Creative artistic time has its own. You, have you felt this too, Leticia? Right? I have chicken skin all over my whole body right now. I'm like, yes, <laughs> it's like a creation different. time. <laughs> 
or time, creative time. And I know when I'm in my studio being creative and I, I make huge drawings and paintings or when I'm dancing, time sometimes five minutes can go by and feel like it was an hour. And sometimes an hour can go by and feel like it's five minutes, right? Time is of a different a different flow. When we let ourselves be in these different flows, it's amazing how much we might accomplish or our minds are actually able to open up and come up with ideas. We can, you know, we've got a lot of tasks to do. The clarity of what is prioritized rises to the surface with much more ease when we're in that creative time. And how, how does this, like this is one way getting into that creativity space is one way to operate outside of space and time in an earthbound body that is made of time. Yes. And I love to say also that um, creativity during the season, creativity can be like some people are like, I'm not creative. And so I'm, I'm really want to encourage everybody to find what is creative in themselves. Your creativeness might this time of year be the way that you're pack, you know, wrapping up the gifts or the way that you um, get inspired about making a meal or, uh, you know, some goofy quality, like our creativity comes out in many, many different ways. It doesn't have to be having a studio. And so when we allow that generosity for ourselves, right, we can find these little pockets of creativity all over the place. Right. So we've talked about um, holding our hands on our hearts. That's one way. Um, another way is to find these, um, pockets of creativity. Another way is to find connectiveness with all things, the desk, the rock, the plant, the floor, the tablecloth. And, um, I'm sure there's, there's so many more ways, <laughs> stepping are, outside, um, right? Stepping outside of our expectations and allowing allowing that timing to step up and bubble up from underground. And do you have like any kind of an exercise of being able to just allow ourselves to align with nature that could be um, something simple that our mm -hmm. viewers could take with them? I'd love to offer them a uh just a, it's simple and you don't have to go anywhere to do it, but I, it is especially wonderful if you're out in nature, if you're out walking in nature, or if you're um, seeing nature, it can be walking down the street and seeing nature, it can be anywhere, but in nature, nature, as in maybe surrounded by trees or surrounded by, is a beautiful place to practice anything. This practice you can do right now. Don't worry about where you are. The first thing I'm going to have you do is look at something and notice that you're observing. This is observing, we're just taking in the information. Now I'd like you to do a next step, which I just want you to reach out. And if you can't touch it, touch it with your eyes. I want you to see what it looks like. What might it feel like? I love doing this with trees or plants or flowers, right? I'm taking that next step where I'm making that little bit more connection and notice that your body lands differently. Mm -hmm. And then the third layer, is while you're in that connection, I'd like you to open up out the top of your head. You can access the expansion up, access your feet touching the ground while you're connecting with this, whatever it is. And just notice what that's like. We've just gone into an expanded connection earth time. And from that place, so much, so much is possible. I mean, I feel so much more relaxed. I feel so much more present in where I am right now. And I actually felt a connection because I was looking at a tree outside and there's other trees around it, but the tree that I was looking at started fluttering in the wind and a lot of people call me silly, but I feel like that kind of a connection is possible to have, okay, that's that communication, right? And I do, I feel landed, um, not in a solid way, but in a, a more um, present way. 
And I feel like it's okay. It's okay that I have a list that's really long to do. And, and that's, I guess, one last thing that I would like to mention. Thank you so much for that. That is invaluable, Kari. Mm. Um, is that, you know, those lists, they're not going to go away. Those tasks, maybe they might even get longer. Um, it's sort of like when we have something that happens to us and there's a saying that says something like, it doesn't matter what happens, it's how you manage it or how you respond to it. And um, I guess that's, you know, also applies to this, is that those tasks during times of the year like this aren't going to go away or during birthdays or during presentations that we have to get through. They, those tasks don't go away. Your attachment to the stress with those tasks can be lifted. And your clarity to what's really important and of deep value to you can become more fine-tuned. Sometimes yeah. when we do more of this work like this, we might notice many of those things on that list didn't really need to be done. And what really needed to be done was taking a little bit more time to say hi to somebody or to, you know, say hi to a tree. Right. Hi or, to in my case like not scold my daughter and get all crazy with her of help me clean this room that didn't happen I was like it's not worth it it's not worth it to go through that with her you know what I mean what's worth it is to be like yeah do some decorating cool like people literally showed up and I had boxes of decorations that were in the middle of the floor I'm like oh maybe we should move these to that front room <laughs> So, you know, eventually halfway through the night, we did that and it was easy and it was loving and it was kind and it was a different experience than I had experienced in years past. So Kari, thank you so much for coming on today and talking about this. I feel like there's so much value in um, all of the exercises that you brought forward today and how we can just bring them into our daily lives. So mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Thank you for having me here. It was a real delight. And for everybody watching and being present to this, take this out into the world and, and own it. Make it yours. Play with it. Yeah. There's so much that gets to be had when we actually own our own experience. Yes. I love that. And if anybody wants to see more of Kari, um, go ahead and visit her website. It's um, going Kari to be com. Thank you. <laughs> it's her name.com. So easy. So um, go ahead and visit her website and you'll be able to get in touch with her. If any of this resonated with you or feels aligning for you, then I would really encourage you to reach out. Thank you. And have Wonderful season, everyone, and whatever oh. else you celebrate, enjoy yourself and those you love. Thank you, Kari. Thank you, thank you. And to Think Tech Hawaii, thank you so much for this platform to be able to have these conversations, to be able to dive into these areas where we don't normally go. Um, to be able to help us thrive and be at a higher vibration and frequency for ourselves and for all of our loved ones around us. And to all of the donors and um, sponsors out there, thank you so much for supporting us. This is a volunteer uh, operation. So any of that that people could help out with, that would be amazing also to keep this, this platform available for everyone. May everybody go in Earth time and uh, enjoy this holiday season and this winter time and be that light in the darkness where all things are birthed. Aloha.